Folks, it's not been the most ideal weekend in Winnipeg sports. I know a lot of you are probably tuning in after uh, Winnipeg yesterday lost the Grey Cup final. I didn't get a chance to see it, but it capped off a tough weekend after a loss to the Pittsburgh Penguins. And, you know, this game for the Jets, I think, highlighted both the good parts of the Jets and some things that Winnipeg is probably looking to solve over the next few weeks. We'll talk about what the Jets might be up to and if this might impact the rest of the season on tonight's episode of Locked On, Winnipeg Jets. Or Locked On, the Hockey Jets, your daily podcast on the Winnipeg Jets. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Good morning and happy Monday, friends. Welcome to this episode of Locked On, Winnipeg Jets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Harrison Lee, an avid Winnipeg Jets fan and an online blogger. You can follow me on Twitter at HLivingLoco and at LO underscore Winnipeg Jets. As always, thank you for making Locked On Jets your first listen of the day every day. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe on your favorite podcasting platform of choice, including Apple, Spotify, Google, Megaphone, Odyssey, and YouTube. Doing so is completely free of charge and ensures you never miss another episode. But most of all, we just really love and appreciate your support. Now, like I said, uh, it's been a really tough last 72 hours in Winnipeg Pro Sports. Obviously, the Jets um, and you know the the uh, the Blue Bombers both fell over the weekend. One of those games had a bit higher stakes for uh, Winnipeg Pro Sports in general. Obviously, a third consecutive Grey Cup would have been awesome. And, you know, I didn't get a chance to really catch the game as I was out of town. But, you know, I was catching back up after uh, the game. had concluded and saw that there were some, well, some interesting play calls, maybe some less than stellar QB play from Zach, which, you know, is kind of unfortunate. He's probably still not 100 percent. And then, you know, some missed kicks and, and stuff. So um, really tough game for the for the Bombers. I was really hoping that they would make it three would have been an awesome story as it is two consecutive championships already amazing, but that would have capped off uh, the crown in the, in the dynasty. So it will also would have done a good job of erasing the sting of losing three, nothing to the Pittsburgh Penguins, right? That game, you know, for the jets wasn't really a, a game where I felt Winnipeg deserved to lose three, nothing necessarily, but I think there were some key takeaways, um, especially with like one thing that I've talked about a number of times. We even dedicated an episode to it on Friday, and that is trying to figure out how Winnipeg is, you know, going to construct this roster going forward. Because, you know, especially on the right side of the wing depth uh, and honestly, you know, even on the left side to a point, the Jets right now are lacking a little bit of finishing talent. Uh, and I've, I've gotten interesting feedback from fans. Like some people on Twitter, if you post about it, right, they'll say, well, what about Connor Shifley, Wheeler, Dubois, Perfetti, all these other guys? And I think the problem with what they're suggesting is that they're not really thinking about the players who surround these guys, right? So let's take Perfetti, for example, right? Perfetti has been among the top five or so uh, scores on this team, at least through the early goings of the season. But you've noticed that Perfetti's not really bagging many goals. I think he has just a handful so far this season, um, like three or four at most. So it's not like he's been lighting the lamp a ton. Uh, and when you look at the rest of the, the Jets, you know, Winnipeg's finishing hasn't exactly been top tier. I mean, Kyle Connor, you know, he's been a bit snake bitten, finally got himself a hat trick the other night, and maybe that will um, kind of open the floodgates. But aside from that, there's just not a lot of guys on this team who are, you know, putting up massive uh, goal scoring numbers. I mean, our, our top goal scorer right now is currently Mark Shifley with 10, which is pretty great. But after that, you kind of notice that it starts to drop off quickly. You've got Dubois with seven, and then from there, it's five, four, four, three. Um, and look, it's not like it's the most important thing for a player to only score goals. Obviously, you know, you're looking at the total package. Are they driving play? Are they creating? Um, are they nabbing assists? What is their total composite picture uh, for how these guys are playing? But I think we all know that when it comes to defensive work, you know, the top six doesn't tend to do a lot of that. And so what you really want from this team is to really be offensively productive. And, and so far, the team has done a solid job. But you notice that once you start reaching the bottom six, things tail off a bit. 
Uh, Lowry has definitely been figuring in on a number of goals. Same with guys like Gagne and Appleton, but it's not like a tremendous amount. And I think when you face games against teams like Pittsburgh, where uh, the Jets actually played them pretty close and pretty competitively, you know, this was a game in which a single mistake could turn into a goal against. And you look at the actual goals against, and only one of them was really a mistake. Uh, the other was just a really nice, um, like a snapshot almost from Jason Zucker. Not much you could do about that. And, you know, the second goal, Hellebuck kind of turned over trying to play the puck. He thought he could fake out Sidney Crosby. Uh, didn't quite work out. Uh, he, he tries. Sometimes he has those moments. But I just feel like the Jets, you're looking for those depth lines. And I think Winnipeg's bottom six does a fantastic job of being a forechecking presence. There's no denying that guys like Gustafson, AJF, um, Saku Mandelein, and a lot of those players are definitely physical. They can kind of grind in the corners. And then you have a little bit of scoring skill and guys like Gagne who have now been promoted to the top line. And so, you know, some other players are rotating in Toninato, et cetera, right? The problem is you're not really expecting them to score like 30-ish or 40-ish points a season. Lowry probably will. Uh, I think Adam's going to get, you know, solid numbers like that. Manalainen hasn't really been all that impressive to me, to be honest. I thought that he'd do a little more, but unfortunately his puck management stuff hasn't really been translating well. And I, I just feel like the stuff that we saw in preseason hasn't really shown up in his, you know, full on ice performance. He's only gotten two points so far. Um, Baron had, you know, four points in nine games um, when he was healthy. Janssen Fialbi, you're looking at one point in 14 games. So not that I'm wanting these guys to mostly be points producers because that's not really their role, but the Jets just need a little bit of help and scoring depth. And I think that in this game in which the Jets, you know, kind of got a little bit goalie, kind of got a little bit unlucky, and then also started to falter late in the game, especially with the top six trying to figure out how to crack through uh, the trap in the neutral zone. It just seemed like the Jets, they have to find a finisher somewhere, somebody who can be a little bit more clinical, who can also boost their power play numbers and just give the Jets another great shot. I think Winnipeg right now has a solid group, but even when Ehlers was fully healthy, it was still a team that needed one extra shooter to be a, a squad that you would say is competitive with some of the top rungs. I mean, you look at the Avs, you look at teams like, I don't know, the Rangers and some of these other squads, and generally they have a few extra shooters uh, of, of notable talent and ability. Rangers less so this year, but last year you could definitely argue that. Avs definitely lost a little bit of de a little bit of depth post cup, but still very strong teams. And so, I think the Jets are are definitely considering shopping. Um, but you know, there's there's one other thing that I think this game really highlighted, and we'll talk about it because I think it was a particular problem, not only in this game but in in previous games and years past. And I kind of want to know what Winnipeg's approach to eventually solving this is, and that is of course the concept of the trap. We'll talk about what is wrong with the Jets and why they struggle against this in just a little bit. Before we go any further, though, I do want to shout out our friends and partners at BetOnline.net. Uh, BetOnline is your number one source for all of the sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis you need this season. You know, if you're looking for the latest odds and trends in professional and amateur sports, whether it's football, basketball, soccer, automotive racing, horse racing, you name it, they've got you covered. Well, you'll find it all at BetOnline.net. They've also got esports, and if you're looking for something that's a bit of a change of pace, they've also got Vegas casino games. I've seen stuff like even German football recorded there. Uh, I looked at a Eintracht versus Dortmund match or something one time. Pretty cool to see that. Uh, but not only do they have online bets for all of these wonderful sports, but they've also got things like sports podcasts, news articles, analysis, and everything in between. So Bet Online wants to be more than just a sports betting website. They want to be your source for all things sports. As always, though, they're the fastest and easiest way to get your bets in, so be sure to register for a free account at betonline.net on your laptop or mobile device right now because BetOnline is where the game starts. Hello, friends, and welcome back to this episode of Locked On Winnipeg Jets. Thank you for making Locked On Jets your first listen of the day every day. Uh, as always, we're just kind of going through Winnipeg's weekend action and it, it was a bit rough if we're being honest the, the Jets weren't so great uh, and, and it wasn't like a game in which the Jets were outplayed by a healthy margin or anything it was more like they exchanged even blows with uh, the Pittsburgh Penguins 
But then once they conceded, things kind of started to falter into neutral. So we'll talk about that latter phase of the game in just a moment. Before we go any further, though, I did want to shout out one of our friends um, and one of our colleague podcasts that I think is very much worth your time. And that is Locked on Sports Today. It brings you the games that matter and the biggest uh, biggest stories in sports and helps you go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with our local experts who provide analysis and insights that only Locked On can provide. You can follow Locked On Sports Today on all of your favorite podcasts and platforms and YouTube. And as always, it is free to subscribe, so do so right now. Circling back to the Jets, obviously, uh, one thing that the Jets, I, I think, have done a really good job of this year is being resilient. When they fall behind, this isn't a team that quits. But that doesn't mean that they still don't struggle, even when they're really trying to fight for uh, a game tying goal or something. And I think how the Pittsburgh Penguins played in the final 20 minutes of regulation really showed one particular flaw the Jets have had over the last few years, and that is breaking down a trap. Now, I won't say that it's an easy thing, right? Every team that deploys a trap knows that it's it's very effective because it clogs up space. It makes um, stretching play very difficult, especially if you're looking for uh, long distance passes up the ice. And honestly, it can slow you down as you try and work your way and pick your way through different gaps and things between defenders only to find that there are layers to these traps. You know, the one three one infamous from uh, the, the good old days of Tampa Bay. And obviously that was an incredibly awful thing to watch. Teams really struggled against it. But over the years, squads have gotten better at dealing with, you know, any sort of trap, whether it's in the neutral zone or a little bit deeper on the ice. The Jets aren't one of those teams. And I think, I don't know if it's like the, the lack of transition skill or maybe just the general confusion of who uh, should be leading the charge on the counter, who should be doing zone entries, all of that stuff. It just feels like the Jets kind of dump the puck in, they chase it. They don't, maybe, you know, they might lose the battle or even if they win the battle, you know, guys get trapped into different spots where uh, the, the the space has been clogged up by another opposing defender or something like that. And so the Jets end up kind of going back and forth, up and down the ice, trying to dump the puck in, chase it, try and create a scoring chance, don't really get much out of it. Maybe they get something off the rush, but it doesn't really lead to a consistent chance or any rebounds. And Winnipeg kind of does this for like 15, 20 minutes and then realizes that they've just sort of expended a lot of energy to not, you know, end up scoring or creating many dangerous looks. And I think it's been, a, you know, especially frustrating against teams um, in the past, like Dallas, the Blues, a number of more defensively minded squads have done to this, done this to the Jets, and it's been a pain to watch. I think the Jets definitely definitely need some skill that's a little more, I wouldn't say like skilled, but I think guys who are, are more capable of navigating space, who know where to kind of pick apart opposing defensive structures with good passes and vision. I think the passing on this team has definitely been an issue in, in, in this season and in years past, past, especially with the defense. The blue line does not have, I would say, the most accurate passing and vision up the ice. Um, the forwards at times are also not always on the same page. And so I, I think the Jets are trying to match, you know, bonuses style to some of their old habits. And you kind of find these games where once Winnipeg concedes, they just really struggle to find a way through. Now, that's that's not to take away from Pittsburgh's performance. Mike Sullivan's a great coach. Tristan Jari had a really good game in net. But I feel like the Jets just lacked a little bit of spark and a little bit of extra edge to kind of push that bit further and eventually solve the trap. And it's it's something that's frustrated them over the past couple of years. I don't know if it's something they're going to fix this season because, quite honestly, I just don't think they even have the roster for it. I think they can definitely break some teams, right? And, uh, you know, eventually through persistence and hard work, you might be able to find those seams. But otherwise, I, I think the Jets are going to keep running into this issue and it would be nice to see Winnipeg be less confused about how to break this down. I think the the low blocks and traps, especially when teams park the bus, have definitely given Winnipeg a lot of heartache uh, and heartburn. So it'd be nice if at one point the Jets start to really figure out how to overwhelm these clogged lanes with pressure, figure out how to break through, maybe even draw some penalties. There are definitely ways that you can get around traps. It's just the Jets haven't really been able to put two and two together and make it happen on a consistent basis. So things for the future, I guess, maybe the Jets can kind of work on uh, finding some players who can really help with transition. I know that people have talked about Brad Lambert and Chaz Lucius. Um, I wouldn't mind them getting their nine games, but I think in this case, for once, you know, I'd really like the Jets to explore the trade market for maybe some more veteran players. I think guys who bring, you know, 
considerable experience and skilled experience. I think that is something the Jets definitely need. This is a younger team right now, uh, and there's stuff to work with here, but the Jets definitely need to make a couple of deals to push the squad from being decent into something a little bit more capable. So we'll see if Shovel Day Off is active before the trade deadline. I think with Ehlers being sidelined for you know a couple of months, especially with the announcement that he's getting sports hernia surgery, it's time to to open up the trade vaults and start doing some stuff. I think Winnipeg really should be after somebody who's more top six nature, maybe a Bo Horvat. I know I wasn't always the biggest fan of the way that Horvat played um, in terms of like his two way play, but in terms of punishing pucks, he's doing it at a crazy rate this year. So maybe he's worth a try. You know, he's a rental. Uh, of course, there's other players out there, Connor Garland. Uh, I've talked about Manta in the past, but Whatever the case is, the Jets definitely need to be thinking about it and getting started in the searching process because other teams are going to be making deals here pretty soon. And the Jets can, you know, maybe jump the shark a little bit and help out this team in the current uh, present as well as the future with a few smart acquisitions. Now, uh, there was one other thing that I think is worth pointing out, something that's a little bit frustrating recently with the Jets uh, and how they've kind of done their prospect development and stuff. We'll talk about it. And I mean, it's, it's just something that's not super unfamiliar to y'all, but you know, it's something worth repeating again. I know that obviously some folks have had mixed feelings on how the Jets have handled the the young defenders and stuff like that, but I think this particular case for what the Jets need and for what people typically accuse uh, some of the rookies of, I think is worth talking about in terms of whether or not the way people perceive these things is really just a little bit. But before we go, I want to shout out one of our other wonderful friends and partners. If you've thought about securing your home with home security, but have been putting it off, you will want to listen up. Right now, Locked On Jets listeners can order the number one rated Simply Safe home security system for 50% off. This is their biggest offer of the year, and you won't want to miss it. Here's why I love Simply Safe. Now, I- I've talked to you about home security before through Simply Safe, but if you're still wanting a bit of a refresher, Simply Safe brings an amazing suite of technological solutions to what are a lot of common problems you might have. Maybe you're worried about going out of the out of town and you're wanting to check in on your home. Well, they've got a great app that gives you a crystal clear HD streaming quality video uh, from your security cameras. They've also got a suite of 24-7 professional monitoring agents who are constantly checking in on the sensors, making sure that everything around your house is okay and they have a great technology called Fast Protect, which allows their monitoring agents to determine whether stuff de- detected by motion sensors or by any of their other advanced sensors is a legitimate threat. Whether it's fire, floods, break ins, all of that stuff, it gives them all the information they need to make sure that they call the right first responders every single time. They've got, you know, stuff for police, firefighters. Whatever first responders they require, you know, they've got the technology to make sure that your home is protected and that they contact the right people. Better yet, though, you might be wondering, well, if it's 50 percent off, how much are you really saving? 24% a 24-7 professional monitoring service from Simply Safe costs less than a dollar a day. That's less than half the price of ADT's traditional professionally installed system. You really can't go wrong right now saving some money. So if you're ready to get started, don't miss your chance to save big on the only security system I recommend. Get 50% off any new Simply Safe system at simplysafe.com slash locked on NHL today. This is their biggest discount of the year, so don't wait. Again, the URL is simplysafe.com slash locked on NHL. There's no safe like Simply Safe. Hello, friends, and welcome back to these closing thoughts on tonight's episode of Locked On Winnipeg Jets. We're just going to close out with a quick thought on Winnipeg's prospect development and whether or not the Jets are are really on the right pathway for how they've been handling guys like, say, Billy Heinola, Dylan Sandberg, some of these other guys. Sandberg has actually been getting in games, and I think we've kind of seen that Dylan probably slides in as maybe like a second or a third pairing um, defensively minded guy. Not a player who does a ton in transition. He kind of has some like Brendan Dillon-ish traits that I think are are effective in the right system and with the right partner. Um, but you know, right now with you know playing alongside Kyle Capo Bianco, you know, Sandberg's being pretty sheltered. That pairing, it doesn't seem like Bones trusts a ton. Now, you know, further to the idea of Heinola being called up and then getting press boxed for a couple of games, I kind of just want to know why. I think the Jets 
they're loath to waive guys um, and they're loath to, you know, incur risk with their defenders. Right. But I think when you look at how the Jets played against Pittsburgh, Pionk turned over the puck a ton of times. Cabo Bianco really struggled with the puck. At times, Sandberg did as well. Pretty much every defender on the Jets roster has issues with turnovers and puck management. Even Brendan Dillon, uh, who was working well with Schmidt recently, has been struggling lately with that stuff. And he's he's not really been able to keep up as much. So I think with the Jets, the idea and the mindset of trying to be more conservative with these sorts of things, I think they need to get away from that. I think the Jets, uh, if you really want to go towards the prospect of, of you know, draft and develop being your model, you need to give room for your kids to make mistakes. Even Cole Perfetti, I think Garrett has pointed out, you know, Garrett Hole, who does great analysis. You can find his stuff on Twitter and uh, from some of his recent blogging ventures. They've, he've, you know, he's had really great tracking information. And, you know, Perfetti, from his eye and from my own personal, you know, vision, we all can see that he doesn't always make the right decisions when he's in possession. He'll see a passing lane that he thinks he can force. And sometimes it's not really the right choice. It might get picked off. Maybe it's it's a little bit overhit. One way or another, he's trying to make a pass that maybe he could do at the lower levels, but at the NHL level, you just can't. And yet, you know, all of us are still very praiseworthy of Cole because he's still an amazing talent. He still contributes a lot of stuff positively, even if the puck management hasn't always been super great. And I think I look at Heinle in the same way. I think Vili could do a lot for this team, especially on the power play. You know, at even strength, you might see some of his issues and flaws start to express themselves. But like everyone else in this defense does the same thing. You know, whether it's Stanley or even DeMello, Schmidt, Capobianco, it doesn't really matter. All of the guys on this team to varying degrees manage the puck horribly, get out bodied, get out muscled, don't have great defensive awareness. Make that less of a focus. Focus more on puck movement, skill, passing, you know, lane creation. I think the Jets need to move more towards a style of hockey that acknowledges that defensively this team might not be the best. You know, there are things that are improving, and I think the Jets have gotten better over past seasons, but embrace a little bit of, you know, offensive, I guess, risk is is maybe the not the right word, I would say, but I think the Jets need to be comfortable with a certain level of exchanging opportunities and looking more at fast counters. I think the Jets can be a faster team a squad that can really hit you on the counter. And if they stop playing, you know, maybe towards a style of hockey that Maurice would have been happy with, I think the Jets will find themselves in better straights. And it's not like the current version of this team is playing super poorly. It's just, you know, with some continued growth and some continued modifications, I think this team in a few weeks or months might start to really show what it can be and how fun this team has the potential to be under bonus. But I'd be curious to know how you feel about this. Let me know at your living loco and at LO underscore Winnipeg Jets on Twitter. Do you want to see more of the kids, whether it's Lambert, Heinola, Lucius, Gavanki, maybe Chisholm, some of these young guns who continue to make really good strides at other levels of hockey? Let me know in the comments below or again on my social medias. Um, But for tonight's episode, that is going to be all the time that we have. Tomorrow's episode, we're going to be taking a look at how the Jets do against the Carolina Hurricanes. Should be a tough game, but hoping that the Jets give us at least not a shutout, right? <laughs> That's all we can ask for. But again, thank you for making Locked On Jets your first listen of the day every day. For your next listen, check out the Locked On Sports Today podcast. From the biggest stories to instant reactions, big game recaps, and our famous take of the day, Locked On Sports Today is bringing sports to you on a consistent basis, and it makes it more than e- easier than ever to listen and follow along with all of your favorite sports. So be sure to check them out on all of your favorite podcasting apps. And as always, thank you so much for listening. Have a great night, and go Jets go.